everybody. In these times when we can't actually meet together at St John's Community Church, it's great to be able to keep in touch in this way as we continue to express our core values of friendship, hope and togetherness. So here's a question. How are you when it comes to waiting? Anybody who's ever travelled with me in a car knows that at the first sign of a traffic queue ahead, I begin to feel gloomy, I get impatient. How long are we going to be delayed? How long are we going to have to wait? I imagine few of us enjoy sitting in a dentist or hospital waiting room. There's a sense just now that we're all in a waiting room of sorts as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Waiting to see how long this current lockdown is going to last. When might restrictions be eased? When might we actually be able to meet together with people who we're really missing? When might the shops be open? When can I actually get a haircut? When Jesus left earth to go back to heaven, we read in Acts chapter 1 of the New Testament that he told his followers that the first thing they had to do was wait. In this instance, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they did, for what turned out to be 10 days, but they didn't know that at the beginning. Anyway, over the next few minutes, we're going to explore a little bit more on this theme of waiting, what it feels like to wait, through three different people's experiences, all who are part of St John's Community Church. And along with their stories, there'll be some reflections on this theme and some music. I hope you really enjoy what follows, that it's a help and an encouragement to you, whatever waiting feels like for you at the moment. So when I got to think about waiting, I started thinking about our wedding and all the waiting that you do in the run up to a wedding. So, you know, you book one thing, so you book the church and then you've got to wait a while until you can do the next thing and you book the photographer and things. And that's all, you know, quite exciting kind of waiting. But um, then I really got to thinking about the actual day of our wedding um, and the waiting and the anticipation um, on that particular day. So like most brides, I woke up really early. I'd got to go to the um, hairdressers and then the beauticians for my makeup doing and all these kind of things. And, um, and I was so, so excited. I absolutely could not wait um, for, the, for the whole day to get going. And um, so we got back from the hairdressers and I was all done up and, and all ready to go. And kind of, I just remember sitting, waiting um, with that um, kind of nervous I guess but nervous excitement um, so the guys came with the car um, to take me and my dad and my mum and my bridesmaid down to the church and I was like let's go let's go you know so um, so eager um, to get going and get get the day started and start our new kind of married life um, together um, and I was like can't we go can't we go and the, the driver um, pointed out that at this point um, we'd, we'd had two cars um, so they'd not actually dropped Matt off yet at the church um, so he's like no we just wait a while uh, you know keep calm um, and we had some photographs done with the car and um, in the garden with my dad and my parents and and, um, and then, you know, eventually um, the, <laughs> he gave in um, and we drove down to church. And again, I was just so, so eager to kind of get out of the car and get going. And, and, uh, and I remember Robin, um, our vicar, um, kind of greeting us at the top um, of church by the Lich Gate. And um, you know, I was like, oh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Let's get going, let's get going. And, um, and he just said, you know, he really kind of tried to calm me down um, and we had a moment of just kind of quiet. It's like, you know, just take a moment. And we stood um, and he said a prayer. And uh, and I remember him saying that, you know, that part of the, the build up um, of, a, of a bride arriving is that anticipation, um, you know, that that's really kind of building um, the whole 
day um, is that anticipation of, of a bride's arrival. And, uh, and it's just really got me thinking about whether, um, you know, we anticipate things enough and spend enough time in that moment before something happens of just thinking and reflecting and maybe praying and um, just taking a moment to think about what's coming and what's going to happen and how that might change our lives. Um, so, you know, it's great to be excited, um, but just to have a bit more reflection and build that anticipation. You know, the, the joy of, of something happening, I think, is quite often in the anticipation and the build up of that. So the theme of this service is waiting and what I'd love to do just for a few moments is share some thoughts with you about my own experience of waiting with uncertainty or to put it another way waiting for God to speak. I guess all of us from time to time have had big decisions to make, huge decisions, decisions that will have life-changing consequences and whenever we're faced with a decision like that it's always good to know what God wants us to do and for some people uh, God speaks very very directly it's like they receive a thunderbolt and they just know what God wants them to do for others and this is certainly my own experience it is much more a long-term thing and it takes time and there is a sense of we have to wait to really know what God wants us to do in that particular situation I'm going to reflect on my own experience of when I felt that I was called into full-time ministry, when I felt I was being called to become a vicar, which was a huge life-changing moment for me. And as I've reflected on that process, I've come up with four things which I, I found helpful for my own experience, but uh, you may also find helpful if you are also in that period of waiting for God to confirm or to speak to you about a big decision. The first thing that I found helpful was finding space to allow God to speak, finding space. We all live busy lives, don't we? And particularly when I think back to when I was thinking about full-time ministry, I had a very busy life, I had a young family, I was working in the prison, I was working shifts, I was working long hours, I was in a fairly stressful job, I was really, really busy and active in my local church. And it's very difficult sometimes, I think, for God to speak to us when we are so busy. And so just finding those moments of time to allow God to speak were really important. It might have just been spending some time at lunch, in my lunch hour, just specifically finding a quiet space and saying, God, uh, you know, what are you saying to me today? Or it might have been even just taking myself off for a couple of days on a retreat. Sometimes just changing our physical environment can really help in terms of listening and hearing from God. So that's a really helpful thing. Find space when we're waiting for God to speak to us. Another thing that I've reflected on is the importance of being alert because the reality is for most of us, life just is busy and it's very difficult to find those moments of time and space where God can clearly speak to us. And we need to be alert to the moments when God is speaking to us in the midst of the busyness. I remember a particular time when uh, in the prison, I was really wrestling with whether I was really called to full-time ministry. And one of my colleagues made a, a, an off-the-cuff remark, just a throwaway, throwaway remark about me being a vicar. And I'd not said anything to anybody and I could have missed that. But actually, I was alert to that and I, I followed that up with him and said, you know, what did you mean by that? And we had a really interesting and a really profound conversation, which was very helpful to me at that time. So in the midst of the busyness, be alert. Also, be proactive. Nearly always when we are considering a major decision, whether it's a change of job or a, 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 any, any sort of major decision, there's a process to follow. And it's important that we engage with the process. And so for me, when I was considering ministry, it involved uh, lots of meetings, it involved uh, being proactive about setting up 
uh, those meetings, about sending emails, about making phone calls, about visiting different situations to increase my experience. And it's important that we engage with that process and we don't just sit back and expect God to do all the work. One of the wonderful things about our God is that he wants to work in partnership with us. There is a coming together of what we do and what God does. And in the midst of that, God reveals his plans for us. And I used to talk about open and closed doors. So I would do things and I would just say a prayer. I would say, Lord, uh, either open this door or close this door, but I'm gonna push on this door and I'm gonna leave the rest up to you. And it's important that we do push on those doors and that we are proactive. And finally, I found it really helpful to be uh, really, to, to make a priority of worship. You know, when we're facing a big decision, really important, uh, you know, it's always important, but particularly important when we're facing a big decision to continue worshiping, to continue praying, to continue reading our Bibles, to continue coming together as church family. And I remember a particular occasion where I was really struggling with all of this and I was in a church gathering and we sang a song and I was really struggling at that time, you know, with the implications of full time ministry on the family I Had a young family. It would mean dragging them out of their schools and dragging them around the country and real disruption. And we sang a song in church and one of the lines said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that really spoke very powerful, uh, powerfully to me at that time about this decision that I was facing. And I really believe God spoke to me in that. So there you go. If you're facing a big decision, if you are uh, waiting for God to speak to you, waiting for God to confirm something to you, if you're just waiting with uncertainty in your life, uh, just four hopefully helpful tips for you in this time. So find space in the busyness, be alert in the busyness, be proactive about the process and prioritise worship. May God bless you.
So I don't know about you, but um, stillness is one of those elusive things in today's society, which it, it just seems quite hard to find and to grasp and to make space to be still. You know, we live in such a fast paced world and we have lots of things to distract us and entertain us and things to manage. Um, I know lockdown's kind of coming to an end at the moment. We don't know with certainty what's going to happen in the future, but um, I know for me, like I've got a family and homeschooling and like the days are just simply speeding by at the moment. And it's um, to, to, to make space to be still, <laughs> it's just challenging, right? It's, it's, it's hard to find the space. And, and then the other thing with stillness is if you do make time to be still, there's the worry or there's the kind of, well, what am I gonna find illness on this? You know, when, when everything quietens down, when it's just me in my own mind, what, what am I gonna find? What, what, what's left when all the distractions, when all the busyness, when all that's taken away, what will I think about? <laughs> and I know if I do make time to be still, it takes me a good oh, 10, 15 minutes just to, to still my mind beyond that. And so it's a challenge, right? And I think there was this, um, was this verse in Psalms which says, be still and know that I am God. And um, <laughs> when, when you are still, that's when you give God a chance to say, hey, I'm here. And whatever you're facing and whatever you've got ahead of you and whatever you're in the middle of, that's when you give God a chance to go, hey, I'm God, I've got you, I love you, I think you're incredible. Let me, can you let go of control for a minute and just let me be God in your life and let me give you peace and let me help. <laughs> And, and I remember the time I was up in the Lake District actually and we'd gone for a family camping trip and so you'd have the normal chaos that goes with a family camping trip of setting up the tent and packing the car <laughs> and all those kind of things and um, uh, we'd done the whole um, set up and we'd had our evening meal and then um, it, was, it was an evening like this, it's, it's about half past nine at night at the moment and uh, there was me and a friend, and we got these inflatable kayaks. And um, it was just such a beautiful, still night. And something in my soul just like was like, I just need to get out into the middle of Oldswater Lake on this kayak. And so me and my friend uh, got the canoes down to the shoreline and we paddled out into the middle of Oldswater. And oh my gosh, <laughs> just talk about stunning. You know, the sunset was across the mountains. The water was as still as a min mill pond, you know, when you kind of put your paddle in and you watch the ripples um, drifting out across the water. Um, and, and both of us, without saying a word, just stopped <laughs> in the middle of Oldswater and, and just rested and were still. And uh, just one of those moments in life that you, you kind of hold and treasure in your hearts because uh, you know, in that stillness, I think for me, like I, I love nature, I feel God in nature. And um, yeah, I think in that moment, you kind of just know that actually, hey, there's a huge God out there who is looking down on you and loves you and has created you to enjoy life and to have peace in life. And yeah, I know we have lots of ups and downs in life, but um, if you can carve out that time to be still and you can still your mind and you can find a time to rest, then that's when you give God a chance to bring peace into your mind and into your heart. So I know it's challenging, <laughs> I know it's tough, but um, 
encourage you to find time in your life to be still and know that he is God. Another aspect of this uh, business of waiting is expressed in the words of a psalm from the Hebrew Scriptures, Psalm 130, one of a number where the person speaking to God is feeling very honest about the struggles of waiting and wondering when an answer is going to come. The very opening words of this psalm speak about being in the depths. But as the words of this setting of the psalm continue, this person who is feeling at their lowest really at this point discovers that as those fears, those concerns, those frustrations are expressed, we can be real with God and find that he is a God who hears, who holds and can set us free from everything and anything that holds us captive. I will wait for you. Out of the depths I cry to you In darkest places I will call Incline your ear to me you and hear my cry for mercy Lord were you to count my sinful ways how could I come before your throne your full forgiveness meets my gaze I stand redeemed by grace alone I will wait for you I will wait for love has made a way, and God himself has paid the price, that all who trust in him today, find healing in his sacrifice. This meditation based on the verse abide in me as I abide in you just as a branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me and at this time of waiting and lockdown that idea of abiding in Jesus seems really important so I invite you now just to sit as you are maybe close your eyes if you want to and listen to this meditation. <clears throat> Abide in me, rest, relax, remain, stay connected, depend on, don't let go, endure, sustain, make your home. Abide in me, lie back and rest on an inflatable bed and let the water hold you and the current direct you. No need to paddle or push, just rest. 
abiding me. Stay connected, make sure you don't lose the signal and wait for the call. No need to keep checking your inbox. You can depend on me to get in touch. Just stay connected. Abide in me. Don't let go if things get tough or you feel impatient. Don't give up. You won't get anywhere on your own. And I won't let go of you. Just hang in there. Abide in me. Keep going through uncertain times. You will always have the resources to sustain you. Trust me to give you all you need. Just endure. Abide in me. Live with me. Dwell, let me dwell with you. Let's face the daily routines, boring tasks, the joys and the sorrows together under the same roof. Just make your home with me. Abide in me. Trust me. Do not strive. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down deep into God's love and keep you strong. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence here with us now. Wherever we are, you are here. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit, your spirit of hope and of expectation. Give us wisdom to know for what we should ask you and patience to wait for the answer. May each one of us have a special sense of your presence over the coming week and know that you are with us our helper and our comforter. In Jesus' name, Amen.